open wheel race car drivers with eyes on IndyCar, Firestone Indy Lights is the premier series to get them there. In 2011, American Joseph Newgarden took home the series title, and he's now four times in the Eyes on IndyCar series. Veteran contenders Gustavo Yachtman and Esteban Carrieri, Young Hopeful, Christian Vaughier, and Oliver Webb all have their sights set on this year's championship. The 2012 Firestone Indy Light season gets underway here on the streets of St. Petersburg. Special guest analyst Jan Bika, I'm Mike King. Welcome to St. Petersburg, Florida, as we get set to drop the green flag on the 2012 Firestone Indy Light season here on the NBC Sports Network. And Jan, well, it's all about young drivers earning their stripes here, but for one driver in particular, Sebastian Saavedra, he's coming back to Firestone Indy Lights in 2012. And Mike, we call it the Mazda Road to Indy, not the road from Indy, <laughs> but part of Sebastian's deal, of course, he has an Indy car ride at Indianapolis, maybe three other races. And at 21 years old, we have to remember, he's just a kid. I don't think it'll set him back too much. Absolutely. But we will be watching some young, talented rookies. We will. And I think that Sam Schmidt has already shown he knows how to pick rookies. His first rookie, Oliver Webb from England, starts third. And first time out of the box, Tristan Vautier, the Star Mazda champ, grabs the pole. First time out. Amazing. Not bad. Absolutely. But certainly when it comes to the veterans in this series, no one wants to win a championship more than Gustavo Yakuman. Coming back to the same team uh, as last year really helps. You know, you don't have to build a relationship with your mechanics again. You have to build a relationship with your engineer again. You know, we we get along really good, and especially with Mike Culver, with the way I look at him, he knows if it's a good change or a bad change. You know, sometimes we don't even need to talk. I'm shooting for uh, the win. You know, it's it's been four years. Uh, I know a lot of the tracks. I know the ovals. I know the car. I know what the car needs. Um, I got a good relationship with the team, so. Ultimately, we want to win the championship. That's our goal. And, you know, I never start a championship or a race without thinking I can win it. Coming down the main straightaway, twin checkers are out. And Gustavo Jakobin wins here the inaugural event for the Firestone Indy Light Series on the streets of Baltimore. His first win in 39 starts. To be able to get that win was really special. It was a really physical track. I'd been training really hard. I was training last year for a half Ironman triathlon. So I was in pretty good shape, and I think this was very important for that result to come last year. You know, I think people were making a lot of mistakes just by the simple fact they were getting tired because it was a really physical track and it was really, really warm that day. So I think that came into my advantage. Also, the car was just perfect. You know, to win a race, all the stars need to align, and basically that's what happened. And we just need to work harder this year to align those stars on more races. <laughs> the co-owner here for Timor Racing. What about Gustavo Jakobin? Do you look more for development now in his fourth season, his second with you guys as a team? Well, Gustavo's been working really hard uh, this year. Uh, we've just noticed a, a tremendous improvement in his maturity, and we think this is going to be a really strong year for him. He looks really good in testing all year. I think he thought he was ready to go up into the eyes at IndyCar Series. He finds himself back now. Do you have to kind of curtail that enthusiasm a little bit, and did it also lead to some uncertainty as to what you guys would do heading into the season? Uh, not really. I, I think uh, they, we thought about it for a long time, and to, he's young. He's not that old yet, and he's got a you know, just be in this season, this series for another year and get a little more under his belt, you know, win the championship would be a really great position for him to be in. So it's just about time to go racing here on the streets of St. Petersburg, the St. Pete 100. Firestone Indy Lights action on the NBC Sports Network. And Jan, the butterflies kind of working a little bit for these young guys as uh, they now come down the Bayfront straightaway setting up for turn number 10. Some rookies making their first starts in these cars, but everyone making their first start with the new rules. So just like they're doing in IndyCar, when they come to the start and you see the green flag, you can pass now the moment the green comes out. It has nothing to do with the start-finish line like they've done before. Green, it's time to go. 
Uh, you see the 77 car on the inside coming off of 14. That is the Frenchman, Tristan Vautier. And no start. Uh, they don't like the look of this one. The yellow flag will wave, Jan. So race control decides, no, we don't like the look of uh, the way they're coming off of 14 this time by. And that was a case of weaving. That was a case of already protecting the inside as the bull sitter. And then other people ducking and weaving. The idea is, yes, you can race when it goes green, but not before. So they want to see nice rows coming up. Then when you let it down, the green flag, that is, then you can pass before the start finish line. Now, Jan, you mentioned the rule change as far as as soon as the green flag falls, you're racing. There's also a rule change where, where it comes to the actual racing and blocking, if you will, or a defensive move. Yeah, the best way is just say, now you can defend before you could not. So they still will give you a penalty for blocking, but blocking has a different definition. Blocking is if you move in response to someone else, you will get a penalty. But if you decide you want to drive up the inside of a corner to defend, if you think you're under pressure from behind for the first time in a very long time, you will be able to do it. Well, once again, uh, it is Vautier being joined on the front row by Esteban Guerrieri. Guerrieri, a veteran of this series, one of four drivers driving for Sam Schmidt Motorsports, the team that has been so dominant. And, you know, Jan, let's face it, Esteban Guerrieri has to be the favorite this season. A lot of people thought, wait, if this guy just performs in a couple of races where he was on the front row nine times last year, he was going to be able to take it from Joseph Newgarden. It didn't turn out that way, and Joseph went on to win this championship. They have a great lineup in the final corner. But what they need to try and do is stay in those rows. Of course, Botier can do whatever he wants and bring them up, and this time they get the green. So we are racing across the line. Vautier, the Frenchman, to the inside. And Jan, he's going to easily grab that spot as they head into turn number one. All the traffic behind him. Always looking back to see if someone tries an aggressive move. And they appear so far. First race of the year, you want to get through without rubbing wheels. And I think they've done it. Looks like those AFS cars are going to run side by Whoa. side. And here comes Gustavo Jakobin. Jakobin in that two car, the yellow, blue, and red machine. He's going to race like his hair's on fire. We talked to him earlier. Fourth season in this series, only one win to show for it. He wants a championship this season. It's pretty much for him, yeah, a championship for nothing. Yes, and that was a great, aggressive veteran move. Remember, the experienced drivers are great on cold tires. Rookies, especially the first start of a season, you're going to be a little bit tentative. Now, of course, Vautier from the front wasn't tentative at all, but some of the other rookies want to get that tire temperature. A veteran will just pounce on it. Well, Vautier has won his share of races. He's a young guy, 22 years old, the 2011 Star Mazda champion. He is going to lead the first lap of the season here, the St. Pete 100, underway, clean and green through lap number one. It's a pleasure to welcome to our broadcast booth for this season opener, the driver that we just talked about a couple of minutes ago that we referenced, the 2011 Firestone Indy Lights champion, Joseph Newgarden. Is, Joseph, you won this race a year ago. It's great to have you here with us as we watch these young drivers compete. You now are full-time the eyes on IndyCar Series, watching your former competitors here on the streets of St. Petersburg. Yeah, it's great to be here, Mike. It's, it's unbelievable to be in the booth watching these guys race now. I was doing this just a year ago, which is unbelievable, um, but it's it's really interesting to watch this series. You know, the whole Mazda Road to Indy, I think, is a fantastic program they've got laid out, and I really want to have a lot more interest put into these guys, because it's really fun watching these kids come up through the ranks. Yeah, Jakobin, uh, you, you saw him make a, a pretty strong move there early on. Uh, Joseph, there uh, on the very first lap, Gus is an aggressive race car driver. He's very aggressive. He, you know, he knows what he wants to do. Like you said, it's make or break this year for him. He, he was deciding if he was going to come back or not. He's made the decision to do it. Now he wants to stand by it. He wants to show people that he's here and he's good to be here. So uh, it's going to be a tough year on this guy and, and certainly for, for Esteban as well. I think that they're both going to have a tough year to, to continue to prove themselves. And I love the quote from Jakob, and he was saying, you know, last year, I think, to start the season, I was too aggressive and too cocky. I'm not going to do that this year. What did yeah. he do? Third turn. <laughs> Boom! Up the inside. Yeah, so we're seeing a kinder, <laughs> Joseph, a kinder, gentler Gustavo Jakob, right? I think he's learned his ways. Yeah, he understands what he needs to do now. Now, let me ask you this. As a driver, when you're on track and you see him in your mirrors, what are you thinking? Yeah, I'm thinking I need to watch him. I need to keep my eyes on him. I don't need to take him off and look into the corner too often. Um, I think the biggest thing you got to learn around these these type of drivers is that it doesn't matter what they do. If you somehow get entangled with them, it's still your fault. 
their way. You've got to be able to avoid incidents and stay clean all the way through this championship. That's the way you're going to score points. Even if someone does something stupid and you get taken out and you're upset about it, at the end of the day, you've got to learn how to avoid that in any way possible. So keeping those eyes up is important. 45 laps is the race distance. We're working on lap number four. Tristan Vautier is out in front of Esteban Guerrieri. Oliver Webb is third. Victor Carboni is fourth on the streets of St. Petersburg. She is easy to spot, giving the universal sign of finished. She's lost a lot and water won't put it back. Yes, she is easy to spot. She is also easy to break. The hydration to help replace what you sweat out, part of the G series. And that is where babies come from. Dad. I have a question. You, you do? Does the asymmetrical tread pattern of a tire have any effect on stopping distance? There's a better place to ask questions about your tires. Uh, go ask your mother. TireRack.com. Get the answers you need online or on the phone to find the right tires at the right price. TireRack.com. Research. Buy. Deliver. Install. We picked a great seafood place. It's a tad bit pricey. And hopefully we caught the chef in a good night. <laughs> Golden Corral's pan-seared seafood and more. It's delicious tilapia, shrimp scampi, sirloin beef dips, and more. All on our endless dinner buffet, still for one low price, only at Golden Corral. Indy Carnation. Champion members get special benefits. And champions get special access. It's a whole different race when you're a champion. Who gets track rides with IndyCar drivers? An IndyCar Nation champion, that's who. Go to IndyCar.com and click on the link for IndyCar Nation. Just $34.95 for the year gets you inside the action with special driver access, passes, exclusive IndyCar Nation events, special travel packages, and more. Join the nation. When you're a champion, you do get to meet me. On the next live Town Hall edition of Costas Tonight, Bob Costas confronts the state of college sports in America. Guest Doug Flutie, Super Agent Drew Rosenhaus, and the leading figures in the college game break down the madness, both good and bad, that defines the marriage between college and sports. Costas Tonight, home series, live from 30 Rock, Wednesday at 10, on the NBC Sports Network. Firestone Indy Lights on NBC Sports Network is brought to you by TireRack.com. Research, buy, deliver, install. TireRack. Along with our special guest analyst, Jan Bikas, and 2011 Firestone Indy Lights champ, Joseph Newgard, and I'm Mike King. Welcome back to live coverage Firestone Indy Lights on the NBC Sports Network. Tristan Gautier is out in front of Esteban Guerrieri, Oliver Webb. Runs third, Victor Carboni for Sebastian. Saavedra is fifth, Jan, as we're working lap number eight of the 45 that makes up this race. And Joseph, I need to ask you, if we look here, it's one, two, three, four for Sam Schmidt Motorsports, your former team. And what, what makes them such a powerhouse? They just immediately, even with rookies, are class of the field. Yeah, I hate to say I'm not surprised whatsoever. Last year, that question came up a lot in media days, and they were like, are you surprised how well you're doing? And I wasn't. I think they've got an unbelievable staff. They've got the mechanics. They've got the engineering power, and they bring in very talented drivers. When you put four of those guys together, it's an absolute force. Yeah, that's a problem for the 20 car. That's Daryl Wills, uh, a rookie. And, Jan, I know you had an opportunity to spend a little bit of time with Daryl, and uh, this gentleman right now having himself pointed in the wrong direction here. What is that, turn eight? Are we in eight? Yes. Actually, yeah. that's four. Yeah, Sorry, that's, that's four. the inside yeah. of four. And he, he is a rookie. We think of rookies coming in at 19 or 20 years old, but he's a rookie coming in at 50. He has a motocross background, 20 years of motocross, has done sprint cars, is an SCCA champion in all kinds of divisions. And that, Joseph, is a big difference when you're coming in with that kind of experience at 50 and you're looking next to you in the driver's meeting, a guy who's 19. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, by the way, I want to remind you that at the top of your screen, you see the graphics, you see the yellow flag. We are full course now, but you see it says lap 9 of 30. We're working on getting that fixed. This is actually a 45-lap race. So we want to remind you that this is a 45-lap race, and uh, we've, uh, we've got the issue there with, uh, once again, this Darrell Wills at the 20. He's out of Alvin, Texas, making his first start here uh, in Firestone Indy Lights in 2012. They're going to quick jack him out of there. And, uh, Jan, these cars do have onboard starters. They should be able to get him started, and uh, he's going to be able to drive back around. Normally, they can refire, and in fact, he didn't even have to reverse, so it was a case where possibly his battery, you can see, thankfully, the Omatro safety team, they always carry those auxiliary batteries, so unfortunately, it must have been that your race battery was low. That's definitely something you want to have charged. Came in into turn four, got a little rear brake lockup, and saved it. No damage, but unfortunately, if you can't refire, you Let's go right it. to the back. Take another look as uh, Daryl Wills, uh, as you mentioned, no, no contact. You can see the smoke coming off the tires. Here's uh, looking from turn five back to four. And by this, by this point, he's already going to come in backwards because, Joseph, it was already starting to hop on the rear brakes. Luckily, he got that turning actually early enough in the corner so he didn't come in and, and lose it mid-corner. If he would have lost that mid-corner, it probably would have pushed right into the tire barrier. Tristan Gaultier started on pole. Jan had a great start, and he's been very clean through the first nine laps here. We're working lap 10, and we should see the green flag this time as they come off of 14. So Gaultier out in front of Esteban Guerrieri. Guerrieri on the front row last year nine times. Joseph, he won six poles. And like I was saying earlier, a lot of people thought if he could just close the deal on a couple of occasions, he would have been able to take that championship away from you. But three times he starts on the front row, he finishes outside of the top ten. You're just not going to win a championship that way. He's an unbelievable qualifier. It's a great trait to have. But if you want to win championships, like I was saying before, you've got to finish those points. You've got to be consistent. And that's what he's got to work on this year. So if he can get that together, he's going to be sitting really good. Uh, Jan, it looks like Bote is off to a good restart <laughs> here. A little loose oh, there he as he comes sideways. through 14. But he maintained the speed. Yes, he definitely carried a lot of speed in. And, you know, as a rookie, you never want to accelerate too late on a restart. I mean, he was way back by turn 9 and he was on it. And, again, he has nice clear sailing in turn 1. You see the red-white number 7 Lucas Oil car. That is Oliver Webb, another rookie. We saw him limited last year. Three starts. His first start in this series uh, with what was then Jensen Motorsports. Jan, he was very impressive. Winds up on the podium at Edmonton last year, and Sam Smith was quick to notice that and scooped him right up. And that was a great call because in qualifying, he was on the provisional pole for a while. It looked like he might be the Sam Schmidt rookie, but then a couple of really awesome performances by Vaudier. I mean, he backed it up. You, saw, you watched that, Joseph. He just bam, bam. It was unbelievable the way, the way Tristan ended that qualifying session. He really put it together when he needed to, and that's that's where a good qualifier comes in. I was surprised Gattari didn't get it right at the end as well because that's normally his trait. So could we see that for the future? Maybe that's going to be the telling tale for the season for Tristan. He's going to be very good at qualifying. Vautier earns the scholarship for that 77 car along the Mazda Road to Indy, Jan, by virtue of his championship last season. That program in its second year now, we saw Brian Clawson and Connor Daly in that car last year, but it certainly appears to be working right now, giving those drivers the opportunity to make the step to the next level. I talked to Sam Schmidt about that. He said it is a full-on true scholarship that Mazda pays the bills they need to pay as a team owner. It is just, it's the way it needs to be done. Sebastian Saavedra, yep. of course, now from Andretti Autosport in partnership with Gary Peterson and AFS. Now, if anyone's going to challenge Joseph, what do you think? It's going to be Andretti Autosport if they're going to go after Sam Schmidt. You would think so, and they've got a good lineup now. They've got two good cars that are going to be running full season. I think that's going to help them a lot this year. They were kind of in between last year with only one car at some events and then bringing another into some. So if they can get on top of this earlier in the season, I think they'll definitely get Sam Schmidt a challenge. It's the battle for fifth play. Make oh, here it comes. He's got a nice run. A oh, wheel to wheel. Whew, that would have been tough to do on the yeah. outside. <laughs> Sebastian saw the door close. <laughs> Victor Carboni uh, in the uh, the three car running just in front. Uh, will he make another run uh, coming to one here? Joseph, what do you think? I think he could have a really good run going here. It looks like Carbone is just starting to struggle with his tires now. As you see him come to the inside, it's nope. just not enough, though. But that is Sebastian Saavedra, Jan. You talked about him early on. He has decided he's going to come back to Firestone Indy Lights for this season. Wants to win the championship. Right now, he runs fifth on this 
streets of St. Pete. If you were a race car driver, you get to say, I'm a race car driver. When people ask you what you do, I wanted to win this race so bad, you'd be a man amongst men. You'd command a rocket ship through nerve grinding courses, the world waiting for you beyond the checkered flag. And fans everywhere would follow you and your sport on IndyCar Mobile. Live in car cameras, streaming race control, and driver pit crew transmissions let you live the high octane dream. Download IndyCar Mobile now, only from Verizon. As you can see, we like to earn free stuff. You ask for free, we give you free. Right now, when you book at any of these Choice Hotels, stay two separate times and you can earn one night free. Book today at choicehotels.com. Wow. For what we pay each week at the laundromat, we can own them. No more waiting for a machine. No more quarters. No more stranger lint. Ew. Get to Renna Center's appliance event and save on washer and dryer sets and refrigerators starting at just $14.99 a week. Now. For the first time, every game, every night, because it's the Cup. The 2012 Stanley Cup Playoffs on the networks of NBC Universal. Do you think you know fishing? Yeah! It's not what we're used to. Think again. No practice. No way points. Because Outdoor Channel is changing the game. Real time scoring so you know what everybody else is doing. If you do something wrong, this guy's fixing to put you in bank. It changes the way you fish. New game? Yes, yes, yes. New rules. I'm shaking like a leaf. No limits. Lights out. Major League Fishing premieres Thursday, March 29th at 9 p.m. Eastern on Channel 606. It looks like he wants some gas. How's it going, gentlemen? What's up, man? Gas prices keep going up. Ooh, crazy, man. And seeing how I saved hundreds of car insurance with Progressive, this takes on me. And we getting a whole free tank of gas. The dude from the Progressive commercial, man, he just filled up my tank for us. Appreciate it. Take care. Good free tank of gas. Man, switch to Progressive, dog. They build a lot of good out here, man. Tell them the messenger sent you. Are you ready to save up to 95% on what you want most? Then try Quibids.com, an exciting new way to shop for products like iPads, MacBooks, HGTVs, cameras, appliances, and more. Quibids is a unique auction website. Each auction starts at zero. When someone places a bid, the price increases by as little as one cent. On Quibids, you can save up to 95% off retail. That's Q-U-I-B-I-D-S.com. Go to Quibids.com now. Firestone Indy Lights on NBC Sports Network. The St. Pete 100, the 2012 season opener. Tristan Vautier out in front, but we've got a great battle behind him. This is a battle for fourth oh, place. Yeah. Side by side off of turn number two. And Saavedra gets him. It's Victor Carboni, Jan, that he gets past. And Carboni giving up the spot. Joseph Newgarden is with us, the 2011 Firestone Indy Lights champ. Knight now drives for Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing in the Eyesight IndyCar Series. Saavedra has really been working on him, Joseph, for the last four or five laps. Absolutely. And, and it always seems to work on that outside through turn one. If you can just sneak on the inside, you don't really have the advantage once you've been overtaken. It doesn't look like. And Jan, actually, we saw him take it earlier. And this is what happened about four laps earlier. Yeah, so this looks exactly the same. But Joseph, look, he went too far. He slid past, and then that let Carboni come back up the inside where there was traction. So that one didn't work. But then he came back a few laps later and said, Aha, I yeah. need to not slide too far by and get my position. And that time it worked for Sedatra. Yeah, and that's, that's what you see from a pro. I mean, he's got a lot of experience. So when he does make a mistake, he understands what he does. He can recognize it and fix it immediately afterwards. So it was, it was a good example of that. And you saw that over-under move, which was really cool to see for Victor. Well, you can see we made the adjustment. We're working the 20th of 45 laps now, Jan. So everything you see up top of your screen is accurate. It is correct. Tristan Vautier has been very impressive here in his first start. He's the 2011 Star Mazda champion. He earns that ride, a scholarship because of that. Here's the driver, and there he is, right now making his way off of turn number nine. Sebastian Saavedra, on the other hand, you referenced it in the open. Jan, he decides to step back after seeing his seat go away in the Einstein IndyCar Series, and Saavedra is back looking to win the championship here in 2012 in a series that he ran in in both 2009 and 2010. Well, he said the program was designed by Michael Andretti, and his idea was, okay, we'll run you at Indy, we'll run you at three other places if the car's in one piece, 
And then if you can win the championship, then you get the Mazda Road to Indy money to come back and stay in Indy instead of taking the road back. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good strategy. It really is. And, and given Saavedra's experience here, it just makes sense. And the fact that he still gets the ride at Indy. Oliver Webb, also one of the young rookies that we're seeing here. We mentioned him just a few minutes ago. Uh, Oliver from Manchester, England, 21 years old. And Joseph, what do you know about this guy? Oliver's a, a very well-known kid in, in England, Great Britain, lots of the European countries. Um, he's, he's been around a while, he, and he's a good driver. Everyone knows him as a fast kid, uh, someone that's got a good head on his shoulders. I actually got to watch him uh, run in British Formula 3 when I was running British Formula 4 myself over in England. Uh, that was back in 2009. But he's a great kid, has a, a very heavy work ethic, I think, so I think he's going to put a lot into this season. He's very excited to be over here in America. He's made this move because he wants to make it works. He wants to be a professional driver, and he understands the system that they've got in place over here now, and he wants to capitalize on the Mazda Road game. You know, and, and Jan, we talked about this a bit earlier. When you won the championship in lights in 1988, you were 28 years old. Right. You know, a 28-year-old driver in lights now seems like an old man. <laughs> but yet, it, when, when you did it, you were right on track with where you wanted to be to climb the, the next rung of the ladder. It's amazing how young the drivers seem to get every year the average age yeah. of the field. I mean, Sebastian Sebastian has been doing IndyCar. He comes back here to Indy Lights. He's still only 21. Still 21. <laughs> yeah. And, and you look at a guy like Gustavo Jakobin right here in car number two with the, the yellow side pods. This is his fourth season in Firestone Indy Lights. A lot of people looking at him sideways thinking, you're going to do this series again, and yet he is still just 21 years old. Yeah, it, it, it is amazing, and that is the difference. In the earlier days, you really didn't want to repeat. You didn't ever want to have perceived taking a step backwards, but when you're 21 years old, you're Saavedra, you can do that. you got so much more time to play with. For us, it's like you have one shot, go to Indy Lights, and you better capitalize because if you don't, people are going to say, ah, he's washed up. Well, the 26 car is working on Gustavo Jakobin in a big way. That is Carlos Munoz, another rookie in the series this year, and he's the teammate to Sebastian Saavedra, also driving for Gary Peters. Yeah, both Colombians, and yep. Sebastian said, to his knowledge, it was the only time the two Colombians have been on the same team. They started racing carts together at seven. They've known each other. They went different ways on their racing careers. Now they're back together and teammates, and obviously that's a, that's a great plan for them being able to share information. Joseph Dugarden, he's going to have to uh, tend to other duties. We wish you luck. Uh, certainly, Joseph, all season long in the Inside IndyCar Series, and then Sarah Fisher, Hartman Racing. Oh, here comes Munoz. 67 car. Yeah, as we watch the pass, Carlos Munoz, we told you he's been working on Yakuman. Joseph, best of luck to you, and uh, come back anytime. Absolutely. Excited. Appreciate you guys having me We on. appreciate it. Yeah, so as we get set to, to go to break, we watch Carlos Munoz pick up a position on track as he goes to seventh. They're all chasing Tristan Gauthier, the leader at St. Petersburg. And that is where babies come from. Dad, I have a question. You, you do? Does the asymmetrical tread pattern of a tire have any effect on stopping distance? There's a better place to ask questions about your tires. Uh, go ask your mother. TireRack.com. Get the answers you need, online or on the phone, to find the right tires at the right price. TireRack.com. Research. Buy. Deliver. Install. Piers Buster's been busy. Yeah, Scott. I was just about to use That's the... That's a bunch uh, of ground-up paper, lad. Scott's Easy Seed absorbs and holds water better. It's guaranteed to grow grass anywhere, even if you miss a day of watering. Seed your lawn. Seed it. The hotter the hot, the colder the cold, the greater the demand, the more you need Duralast. Batteries built to exceed the need. Only at AutoZone. Hi, my name is Susie, and I've had a stroke due to my cigarette smoking. I now need help with feeding, dressing, bathing, even going to the bathroom. Sometimes it's people who work here. Sometimes it's my son, Daniel. My tip to you is enjoy your independence now. You can quit. For free help, visit smokefree.gov. Why should you get a domain name from GoDaddy.com? Because a domain name lets you do so many things on the internet. Use yours to build a website, to promote services or sell products. Post your resume. Register your baby's name. Create a wedding site. Then post photos and videos to share with family. Visit GoDaddy.com now to see more things domain names can be used for. 
and get your very own GoDaddy.com. Domains, websites, and everything in between. I believe in starting strong and finishing stronger. I believe in open wheels and open throttle. And teamwork. Passion. I believe in IndyCar. The Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama coverage begins Sunday at 1.30 with IndyCar 36 featuring Tony Kanaan on the NBC Sports Network. Along with Young Bekus and Jake Query, I'm Mike King. Welcome back to St. Petersburg, Florida. It's Firestone Indy Lights action on NBC Sports Network. David Ostella's day ends early, Jan, over in turn 13. Here's what happened earlier. You just see the end of this. He gets into the outer wall, and I'm thinking they replaced this entire gearbox just before the start of the race. He had trouble downshifting that possibly returned because that's the place where you downshift. Oh, the leaders may have made contact before the restart. So we go back to green flag racing here at St. Petersburg. 26 of 45 laps will be complete. Tristan Vautier pulls away, but boy, for a second, Jan, it looks like we might go three wide into turn number one. Oliver Webb and the Lucas, that's the red and white car just in the center of the screen. Looks like he might be able to make a move. For second, now Sebastian Saavedra and the AFS red and yellow now really racing. So here comes Saavedra to the outside in the 27. Right behind him is Victor Carboni. Then Carlos Munoz in the number 26 car, the team car to Sebastian Saavedra at AFS racing. Tight racing for third, fourth, and fifth place right now. But the four car is not part of it. That is Jorge Goncalves. We saw a problem earlier in turn four for Daryl Wills. It's the second incident of the day, Jan, as Goncalves has gotten turned around as well. Don't know if there was contact there. Sounds like it may still be running, and they do have reverse, but you have to push a lever on the left-hand side while you move the gear shift forward. At the moment, no reverse. If they can't move it, they'll have to go to full course caution again. So right now, we have a local caution waving in the turn four area. As Jorge Goncalves has encountered a problem, first, second, third, Oliver Whoa, Webb. Oh, look out, Yakuman, almost, Yakuman yeah. again. almost got into the back of Munoz. We're going to go back to full course yellow, though, because Goncalves, they have not been able to move the car, and he is in a very precarious spot there, Yak. Wow. No way they can get to him without going full course caution. They gave him every opportunity to get it into reverse. You can see him looking down, because he does. Again, he has a lever on the left-hand side, but let's see what first got him into that spot. Uh-oh, his other team car oh, was you think his teammate got him? I don't know, but his teammate was right behind him, and all of a sudden it looked like he might have had some help. Alain Day is yes. his teammate in that nine car, the other red car. Doesn't appear to be any damage, and Jorge Goncalves will speed away and he looks a little angry at this point when he, yes, when he slammed down that helmet visor uh, those eyes uh, have a little fire in them absolutely well he's lost a lap that's the main reason for anger but i i wonder whether he had some help the one thing we've learned so far is that votier is awesome on restart absolutely he leaves everybody in the dust well gun calvez is back for a second season in firestone indy lights the same team that he competed with last year Bellardi. Uh, he's a young man from Los Teques, Venezuela. Certainly not happy with the situation right now. On the other hand, up front, the rookie, Tristan Gautier, we're going to have the opportunity to see him, I think, a lot this season at the front of the field. He has uh, put on a, a very nice show so far here as we're showing 28 complete working laps, 29 of the 45 that makes up the St. Pete 100. He's got some pretty fast pace laps going. He sure does. It's supposed to be pace car speed. I'm not sure that's quite pace car speed. They'll be calling him saying, hey, slow down there. <laughs> you see how all the drivers are running there at the top of the screen. Vautier has been, as you mentioned, Jan, outstanding on restarts. Okay, now he gets him packed up. There you go. 
So he continues to weave. Let everybody know, Jan, when you see a driver weaving back and forth, left to right, what's he trying to do there? You're trying to clean the tires. A lot of the, you know, a lot of times you talk about, you know, they're trying to get heat in the tires. Not necessarily, but it, it is very effective on cleaning the tires because there's lots of marbles, rubber marbles, all over the racetrack. And when you run offline, especially at slow speeds, those tires pick that up. Now, last time here in the final corner, he slid wide. Aha, this time he learns another great restart. Sam Smith Motorsports, as we come to the green flag, with 29 laps complete, Sam Smith Motorsports, Jan, runs one, two, three, with Vautier, Garrieri, and Webb entering turn number one. Oh, Jakobin got into the back of Munoz. Oh, but Munoz saves it. What a great save by Munoz there. Wow, awesome. Oh, oh not this time. Ouch. Boy. Oh. Contacted turn two for Munoz, a tough restart, and it is a yellow, a local yellow waving, but the 26 car is finished for the day. Wow. Boy, that was a big hit. It was. He got tripped up. He came back into line and went over. That was wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. Did you always fear? Thankfully, he didn't get upside down, but, man, that was a big hit. So Carlos Munoz from Bogota, Colombia. He is a rookie in Firestone Indy Lights this season. And Looking he had such a great now. save. He had that awesome oh. save in turn number one. Then he collects it. Unfortunately, then someone just got their wheel right underneath. Well, he had already had, as you mentioned, here's the contact first with Gustavo Jakobin, yeah. who runs up his rear end. Yeah, and that's not his fault. He did He did what he was supposed to. You're allowed to defend now. Look at the save. Fantastic. But now as he gets going, that'd be Garcia. Okay, okay we'll watch a car that goes camera. by. You're going to see a dark red car of Garcia. Now gets back into line right there, yep. and Garcia tries to back out of it, One. but unfortunately not enough room for two cars, and that trips up and puts Munoz heavily in the fence. Yeah, so Juan Pablo Garcia in the 76 out of Mexico City, driving for Jeffrey Mark Motorsport. Looks like he escaped unscathed from this, but not the case for the driver of car number 26, Carlos Munoz. That's a, that's a tough two-corner combination for him, yeah. So Carlos Munoz finished for the day. He will wind up 12th. Tristan Gaultier looking for the win on the streets of St. Petersburg. Houston Institute of Style. You may come as schlubs, but you will leave with swagger. Exhibit A. This guy's a list of fashion fumbles. Nothing fits. Khakis can work? They left it open over the middle? What a schlub. Exhibit B. And B is for beautiful. Man, this is style in motion. That's beautiful. Picks a perfect pattern. It's a great combination. And that's a playmaker. Style is a statement, gentlemen, and a statement we will make. That's beautiful, man. K&N Renegade 1000 XXC with the most powerful engine in the industry. The Outlander 1000 XT with a redesigned chassis for unequal trail riding. The Commander 1000 Limited, the most equipped, luxurious side-by-side -side in the industry. The facts say it's the most advanced lineup out there, but the ride says it all. Buy now and start riding for as low as $149 a month on select models. Bravo, Charlie, initiate launch sequence. Wide mouth is in position for resealable cap. Cap in place and lock. Commence final cooling. T minus 34 degrees. Mountains are blue. Silver bullet aluminum pint, you are clear for launch. Houston, we have refreshment. The silver bullet aluminum pint from Coors Light. The world's most refreshing beer. Could he be the next rookie winner of the Indy 500? J.R. Hildebrand out along 
the white line. They said 2011 was the best Indy 500 finish ever. Buttering slow and he hits the wall. Dan Weldon has won the race. They also said that in 1982, 1989, 1992, and 2006. Witness the next chapter in the greatest spectacle in racing. For more great finishes and ticket information, go to Indy500.com. Racing on the streets of St. Petersburg. Tristan Vautier has been oh so good. And let's see if he's going to be able to hold the lead as Sebastian Saavedra makes the charge on the inside. He's going to pick up a spot here, Jan. Saavedra, a nice aggressive move to the inside. And at the same time, Alain Day in the other red car also picked up a spot. Nice aggressive moves on the inside. Now Gustavo Jakobin, uh, of course, we go back to green after the lengthy yellow for the cleanup for the incident involving Carlos Munoz, Gustavo Jakobin now running six. Jan, are you at all surprised that he wasn't penalized for that contact early on that kind of precipitated that whole mess? He definitely got in from behind. You could term that incidental contact, avoidable contact, but it was a slight nudge, just enough to turn somebody under braking, and that's one of those things where Tony Cotman decides, ah, okay, we'll let him slide this time. Yeah, and it, it actually wasn't Jakobin's incident that caused the crash. It, it right. led to what happened between Munoz and, and Juan Pablo Garcia, where that contact is what caused the uh, fortunate uh, contact uh, for Munoz. But now we're watching as Oliver Webb has given up the position to Sebastian Saavedra. So Saavedra continuing now to try to make the move as Esteban Guerrieri will be next in his sights. Guerrieri has run second throughout this race. Sebastian Saavedra seemed as though he didn't have the same kind of speed for the Sam Schmidt cars early on, but there has been a change in compound with the Firestones for this season. The 2012 tires act differently than they did in 2011, and everyone is saying that it's a year, 2012, where you have to manage tires. Sebastian Saavedra, with his experience, may have been holding back knowing that you need to save the tires for the best grip at the end. Less than 10 laps remaining. There's your leader off of turn number nine, Tristan Vautier, the Frenchman. His first start in Firestone Indy Lights, the battle for second behind him. Jan, how impressed with what you're seeing out of Vautier here? So far, Vautier has been perfect. He had perfect starts. He's had perfect restarts. Apparently, he's got speed on the field, and he's keeping the tires underneath him. And thankfully, he has a teammate keeping Sebastian Saavedra at bay, who may be one of the fastest cars on the track. Great day. Vautier, part of that strong Sam Schmidt Motorsports stable. They run 1-2 right now. In fact, they hold three of the top four spots as Vautier and Gary Airy are out in front of Sebastian Saavedra. Oliver Webb, the third driver for Samson. A little loose there. It's the 77 car coming off of turn number one. You will start to see they'll start to lose some traction as that happens. The front tires tend to kind of give you the indication first, then you'll start to lose a little bit of traction, but that's okay. I mean, he he is definitely still maintaining that gap, and, and I think that's actually good at Firestone, at least on a track like this. You don't really want to have tires that you can just run flat out for the whole distance because it doesn't teach you that driver discipline. It's a training series. you got to know how to manage your tires. Through the kink on that long bay front straightaway. Now the left-hander that is turn number 10 on to Dan Weldon Way. Recently renamed for the late IndyCar great Tristan Vautier out in front of Esteban Guerrieri. Question now is, does Sebastian Saavedra have anything left for the 11 car? I think he might. I think so. He needs to get a great drive off that final corner. That's not quite close enough, but if you can get good traction, he certainly seems to have the braking ability down in turn number one, where he's pulled off already a couple of great moves. So with 37 laps complete, we're working lap 38 of the 45 that make up this 2012 Firestone Indy Lights season opener on NBC Sports Network. Mike King, Jan Vikas, Jake Query bringing you all of the action. Looking forward to a great season once again. Of course, Jan, you'll be back with Bob Jenkins and company. Everyone getting set for this weekend's event coming up at Barber Motorsports Park as uh, you'll be back in the booth. The analysts were there, and we appreciate the fact that you decided to come on down and join us for the Firestone Indy Lights Open. Anytime, Mike. We'll do the same thing in Barber. Alon Day is in the center of your picture in the red machine. We were wondering whether he may have had some contact with his teammate, Goncalves. 
we don't know for certain it. His engineer is Eric Zito, who has a long history in IndyCar, Champ Car, was Paul Tracy's engineer along with A.J. Allmendinger or some other big time drivers. And he said he feels as a rookie from Israel that this driver here, Alon Day, has the best cold tire feel and performance that he's seen since the early days and the prime of Paul Tracy. Driving for Bellardi, Alon Day right now has shown seventh. Tristan Bautier, up to this point, he has been flawless. Esteban Guerrieri is second, the vapor is third on the streets of St. Pete. This is beautiful. Jessica, there's something I want to ask you. Yes? When I'm switching to winter tires, do I have to change all four, or can I just put two on the front axle? I don't know. There's a better place to ask questions about your tires. Get some wings? TireRack.com. Get the answers you need, online or on the phone, to find the right winter tires at the right price. TireRack.com. Research. Buy. Deliver. Install. IndyCar Nation. Champion members get special benefits. And champions get special access. Don't ever race when you're a champion. Who gets track rides with IndyCar drivers? An IndyCar Nation champion. That's who. Go to IndyCar.com and click on the link for IndyCar Nation. Just $34.95 for the year gets you inside the action with special driver access, passes, exclusive IndyCar Nation events, special travel packages, and more. Join the nation. When you're a champion, you do get to meet me. Friday night, reigning MVP Dwayne DeRosario and DC United host Breck Shea and FC Dallas. Then, on Saturday, David Beckham leads LA Galaxy against Matt Reese and New England. Major League Soccer on the NBC Sports Network. What do you... How did we do it last time? I don't know, I forget. Hello, neighbors. Hey, Scott. Perfect timing. Feeding your lawn need not be so difficult. Get a load of this bad boy. Sweet. This snap spreader system from Scott's makes caring for your lawn snap, cracking, simple. Guaranteed. Just take the handy no-mess bag, then snap, lock, and go. It's a new day for lawn care. Feeding's never been so easy. See a demo of the snap spreader. Go to scots.com. Feed your lawn. Feed it. Ten weeks, five boats, one goal. Atlantic Bluefin Tuna. A single fish can bring in over $15,000. But if the lines come up empty, they face financial ruin. It's definitely a gamble. Out here, their lives are on the line. People get pulled right overboard. Weekend Tuna, series premiere, Sunday at 10 on National Geographic. Channel 276. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with mesothelioma or any other asbestos-related cancer, call now. Mesothelioma is a rare cancer, one of many linked to asbestos exposure. Exposure to asbestos in mills, shipyards, or in the heating, construction, and automotive industries may have put you at risk. Secondhand exposure to people close to you may have also resulted in mesothelioma or another asbestos-related cancer. Please don't wait. Call 1-800-537-5443. That's 1-800-537-5443. Along with Jan Vikas and Jake Query, I'm Mike King. Welcome back to coverage of Firestone Indy Lights, the St. Petersburg 100 on NBC Sports Network. And you saw the flagman, Paul Blevins, show the driver's five fingers. Jan, now just five laps remaining here. And for Tristan Gauthier, five laps away from <laughs> wrapping up a perfect weekend. Yes, and he's in turn three. Funny enough, he lives here in St. Pete and said, well, I live really close to turn three. So <laughs> if he can get five more laps in the books, he doesn't have very far to go for party. He, yeah, he's he's going to be carrying a trophy home to, to, <laughs> yeah. to turn three. So Gauthier, he has been on pole has led from the start, and Jan, you've been very impressed with his restarts here. I have. I've been extremely impressed with every aspect of racecraft, and it's just hard to imagine that he's come here, his very first Indy Lights race, with some very seasoned veterans, and he hasn't put a foot wrong. Now, the moment we say that, <laughs> I hope I haven't cursed him on the final four laps here, but fantastic job. Votier. Well, the Mazda Road to Indy is being good to Tristan Votier. That is for certain. He was the 2011 Star Mazda champion at 22 years of age. He gets the scholarship, joins the strongest team in the series at Sam Schmidt Motorsports. And now, Jan, it looks like he's fulfilling all expectations. Will very likely go to Barber now. If all things stay the same, he's going to be our championship leader going to Barber for race number two. Well, let's not count out Esteban. Oh, look at Esteban yeah. Guerrieri. Woo. He's getting a little loose, and he 
he's getting after him. I think that Guerrieri knows that if there's any shot at going after his teammate, he's going to come now and put some pressure on him. We've heard it forever. Loose is fast, is but loose could also be dangerous on a course this tight. It can, but Guerrieri knows that if you're a guy who's doing your first race, Alonde and Garcia still battling behind, but up towards the front. If you want to make a move, it's what Garcia is doing here. You have to put pressure on someone because Vautier hasn't had pressure all day. And here comes Garcia. It's the battle for seventh, heading to turn Whoa. number ten. Alonde just let him go. How about that? I, I think there's, I think so. I think there's an issue there. Ah, uh, I believe it looks like a tire might be going down yeah. right front on Alonde. Yep, sure enough, you can see it. Yep. And just as Garcia was making the move. You saw the nine. You, you saw Alande have to get out of the gas. So Day involved in a good fight there with Garcia. Had to break it off. Up front, though, Vautier and Guerrieri. This one not over. The gap of bound run just under a second at the line, about 9,500. As Vautier saw his teammate Guerrieri make a charge on that last lap. Did Guerrieri use it all up there, Yon? No, I think Guerrieri has amazing rolling speed in turn four. When we saw him get loose. It's when he came in quickly and got off of the brakes and just shoots you, gives that momentum and shoots you into the corner. And I think that he's really just trying to get in there, push Tristan and see if, okay, this rookie's had a great day. Let's see how he can take some heat from me. He had narrowed the gap of the previous lap to under eight tenths of a second. It grew back to nearly a second this time. As they come off of 13, now 14, it looks like he may lose a little bit more ground. Let's see as they come to the line, we'll be able to tell you the gap here as the two Sam Schmidt Motorsports teammates cross the line now with two laps remaining, 43 complete, remain virtually identical, 80 hundredths of a second, the gap now between Gautier and Guerrieri. But for Guerrieri, I think his best corners that he has are coming up. That's turn three now. So it's the turn four, five, six segment they're getting to, I think are Guerrieri's best corners, and this seems to be right in here where he closes the gap. So Alain Day, who we told you about earlier, continues to struggle holding up some traffic. And I think that, uh, has that tire gone completely down yet? Oh, yeah. I'm surprised he didn't hit pit road last time around. Now he will just have to. Yep. So the right front goes flat for Alain Day. He will have to come to pit lane. He will miss the finish here in the 2012 season opener. Out in front, heading to turn number 10. Tristan Vautier in that number 77 machine out in front of Esteban Guerrieri. His Sam Smith Motorsports team made by about eight, maybe ten car lengths. And Yondo come to the white flag this time. Wow. And Vautier hasn't, hasn't bothered him at all. He's Not like, at all. It's no problem for me. <laughs> Sebastian Saavedra, who we have talked about, he, he makes his return to Firestone Indy Lights after a year in 2011 full-time. Oh, oh, look out! That's in turn 10. Saavedra looks like he's going to wind up on the podium here as he is not going to be challenged for third. So as we watch a bit farther behind the leaders, that's Armand Abraham from Chanel, India who we saw earlier in the yellow and black car. And as Tony Castaneda that was in there duking it up with him. But of course, the important part up here, yeah, the up leaders. front, Tristan responded. Was not, never missed a beat. Gary Ari threw everything he had at him and he only has a couple more corners. That was really the last passing opportunity. Now just don't run into anything. Exactly. Let's remember <laughs> that Gary Airy finished second in this championship last year, as we told you earlier. Nine front row starts. He had another one here, but not going to be enough to catch the talented young Frenchman in his first Firestone Indy Light start. Tristan Vautier, a perfect race weekend as Yanni captures pole and leads all 45 laps. Doesn't get any better than that. And he had to do a lot of restarts. He had to work racecraft. He had to protect his tires. <laughs> what a fantastic way to start. So Vautier is thinking, there's nothing to this. <laughs> I, I win the 2011 Star Mazda Championship. I'm going to win this championship yeah. too. Well, it's home course advantage. You know, well, we, got, so. we got a lot of races to go. So he gets to carry the trophy home to turn three. Yes. Or to his apartment nearby turn <laughs> three. As his fellow competitors will salute him, as will the course workers. And he nearly climbs out of the car. He's got to be happy. 21-year-old Tristan Vautier. Beats Esteban Guerrieri to the line. Sebastian Saavedra fills out the podium here at St. Pete.
Seafood place. It's a tad bit pricey. And hopefully we caught the chef in a good night. <laughs> Golden Corral's pan-seared seafood and more. It's delicious tilapia, shrimp scampi, sirloin, beef tips, and more. All on our endless dinner buffet, still for one low price, only at Golden Corral. If you were a race car driver, you get to say, I'm a race car driver. When people ask you what to do, wanted to win this race so bad, you'd be a man amongst men. You'd command a rocket ship through nerve-grinding courses, the world waiting for you beyond the checkered flag. And fans everywhere would follow you and your sport on IndyCar Mobile. Live in-car cameras, streaming race control, and driver pit crew transmissions let you live the high-octane dream. Download IndyCar Mobile now, only from Verizon. Could he be the next rookie winner of the Indy 500? J.R. Hildebrand out along the white line. They said 2011 was the best Indy 500 finish ever. Buttering slow and he hits the wall. Dan Weldon has won the race. They also said that in 1982, 1989, 1992, and 2006. Witness the next chapter in the greatest spectacle in racing. For more great finishes and ticket information, go to Indy500.com. On the next Costas Tonight, Bob Costas confronts the state of college sports in America with guest Doug Flutie, Super Agent Drew Rosenhaus, and the leading figures in the college game. Costas Tonight, live from 30 Rock on the NBC Sports Network. As a new season begins, IndyCar's elite take the wheel of an unproven new car to try and keep Dario Franchitti from his fifth championship. The Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama on the NBC Sports Network. Firestone Indy Lights on the NBC Sports Network as we have watched Tristan Vautier win the 2012 season opener. He beats Esteban Guerrieri to the line by just over a second. Sebastian Saavedra in his return to the series winds up third to fill out the podium. Oliver Webb in his first start in the series is fourth. Victor Carboni is fifth. Gustavo Jacobin had a couple of run-ins but still soldiers home to a sixth place finish. And Garcia, Abraham, Castaneda, Wills filling out the top ten. You see your other finishers there. Beautiful day for racing in St. Petersburg. Even better day for Tristan Vautier, who, while a Frenchman, calls St. Pete his adopted American hometown. And he's in victory lane with Jake Query. The celebration is on. 22-year-old Tristan Vautier in his debut in the Firestone Indy Lights. And he ends up where so many would like to be. Victory Lane, a star Mazda champion a year ago, and already you can see the celebration. Tristan, first and foremost, congratulations. Outstanding run for you. Take me through it. Oh, man, an hour is long. I didn't know what it's going to be to have a one-hour race, but it's long. It was cool. I mean, I, I had a good start and just tried to take care of my tires, all the Esteban behind, and uh, managed to get a good gap be before this yellow, and uh, then I had to do it all over again. It was really tough on cold tires after the, the restarts. But no, I mean, great, great job from the Schmidt guys. I mean, if Chris Griffiths can see this from where he is, I think he must be really proud of, of all these guys. You know, they're doing great. And uh, no, really happy. Thanks to Mazda to put me here to the Mazda Road Tool in the, in the ladder. Thanks to Samsung Motorsports for the opportunity. Firestone provide great tires. And Sparkle, because the suit kept me cool all race long. So it's good. You got a chance to work on restarts, too, because we had a couple At any point, did you worry? Did you wonder whether or not Esteban could get a jump on you? The last one was tougher, of course, because, I mean, restart after restart, Esteban was working and was seeing what I was going to do. So I was trying to, to trick him a little bit, but it was tough and tires were cold and you got to get so much traction off this corner that was not easy, but, I mean, it worked out great. So big thanks to, to the team, big thanks to everyone allowing me to be here and, uh, yeah, uh, let's keep working hard for the next race. You caught me by surprise. I've never had somebody shake my hand there in Victory Circle, but congratulations. The first handshake for the winner, Tristan Vautier. Guys, so with one race in the books, Tristan Vautier is your championship leader, headed to Barber Motorsports Park. Esteban Guerrieri, second in the championship. Sebastian Saavedra, third. Jan Bikas, your thoughts on the 2012 light season opener? Just amazing to me, the skill of rookies that coming through the Mazda ladder, that they can have that kind of poise to be able to just take that kind of pressure and go out there as Tristan Vautier did in just convincing fashion. 
And let's remember that Tristan Vautier, it was not as though he wasn't holding off a seasoned veteran in this series in Esteban Guerrieri, a driver that many thought should have won the championship last year. Well, you know, maybe Guerrieri is, you know, being wiser and knowing, you know, today it was second. We've got a lot of other racetracks to go. When we get to Barber, it's going to be a different animal. The tires are going to perform differently. You're really going to have to manage your tires. And so there's, it's a long season. But for today, certainly it was in a rookie's hands. So Tristan Vautier, the rookie from France, what a weekend as he claims pole, leads all 45 laps, and takes the checkered flag in his first start in Firestone Indy Lights. So that's going to do it for us. I want to say special thanks to Joseph Newgarden, the 2011 Firestone Indy Lights champion, for joining us for a few minutes in the booth. Of course, Dion Bikas, our special analyst for this event and the Barber Motorsports event as well. And of course, our pit reporter, Jake Query. I'm Mike King. Thanks so much for being with us. And congratulations to Tristan Vautier, the winner of the St. Petersburg 100.